Uh, welcome to this Carrier Update brought to you by PowerFleet. I'm here with Thomas Watson. Thomas, who are we starting off with? Happy Monday. And with always, every Monday, we're going to start with a map. And so kind of you have your early morning coffee. Well, now you get your early morning map. I love it. It, it, it should be as good as a coffee, I think. But looking at things right now, the, the state of freight, so to speak, we're in a situation where we're seeing quite a bit in terms of falling uh, tenders. So tender rejection rates are falling, volumes are falling uh, in lieu with rising fuel prices. Interesting thing to look at, check out some of our major markets. Los Angeles on the far left here, getting close to like 5%. I mean, it's, it's going down. And yeah. then in terms of Dallas-Fort Worth and even areas of the Harrisburg market, uh, what we're seeing here is um, you know, our regular lanes along the 40 corridor as well as parts of the uh, upper northeast are starting to decline. And then if you look at the very top of the country near the Great Plains, it's, it's still kind of, uh, it's not the wild west, but it's definitely cold as you move out west in that area. So seen quite a bit in terms of rejections, but you notice the very little color coding just because their volume doesn't play that big of a deal. Yeah, and I mean, that's going to be one of, <clears throat> excuse me, great takeaways here <clears throat> is that the color is really going to really denote where that volume is. And I think we can see that upward movement and how much of an impact it's going to have. And so I think that's why I love these maps so much, especially on a Monday morning, is because it shows you, it's like that interactive, okay, is this going to be impactful? How high is that volume? How much of a market share does this area actually have? Exactly. You know, you're, you're going in your morning meetings, you're a broker, you're a carrier, you're a shipper. You see the red over here, you're thinking, well, maybe I'll have a little bit of an easier week than last week. So that's kind of what we're hoping to do here. Going on to our second chart, uh, we're going to further do some, some digging, so to speak, mentally digging, outbound tender volume index. So if we look at it to my back left, we're at 14,230. So we're seeing some downward movements in tenders, but we have that next to our rejections index, which is currently down to 17.05%. Uh, so What's the takeaway with this chart? We see that volumes were, they're higher, they're slowly moving downwards, and as this minor decrease in volume, what we're seeing is quite a bit of decrease in tender rejections, and this is over you know, approximately a three-month uh, snapshot. So very important to keep an eye on, and we're gonna kick that over to chart three real fast, just because why is it going down? Well, there are a lot of different competing theories here. One of them is maybe it's just diesel's, you know, price at the pump. So we're looking at it here. We're 513 a gallon at the actual pump. Our DOE should update later today. It's at 484. But what we know is right now it is going up. And so the question is, if fuel prices go up, how is this going to impact the market? There's kind of one of two ways this can go. Either rates will go up as carriers try and charge more to cover the cost, or volumes start going down as shippers really ask themselves, is that final box of cereal really needed, or can I get away with cutting back on volumes until I feel like the prices have improved? And it's hard to tell with the data. We're really early on with this situation. We're coming up on three weeks now. Um, how will this impact volumes? It appears right now volumes are going down. And if volumes are going down, we're gonna kick it over to our next chart. We may see a movement in uh, terms of rates. So this is average length of haul as well. And, and what's interesting to look at with this data is that we have gone from an average length of haul of 625 miles uh, going through last year, all the way down to 441. There's change in the supply chain. Average length of haul in the trucking world is almost like you take all the loads you have, you ran, all the miles, and then you simply you know, divide them up for the average length of haul. So when that happens, when we're talking about profitability, how many loads per week can you turn? And if you're running at 600 plus per load, you can't really turn as many compared to like 441. You can easily knock that out in a shift. So why is this important? It looks like there's fundamental changes in terms of market structure and tenders. Customers are probably looking for savings. And so why would you want to kick it at, you know, four bucks a mile, three bucks a mile, 600 miles, however many? Eh, 441 sounds a little bit better. So it, we're trying to find that into our final chart here. We're just, we're kind of playing detective, so to speak. Uh, but, uh, you know, looking at this as well, our wait times are going down. So we have a lot of different factors to pay attention to to figure out what the heck is going on. But one thing we do know is 
The length of haul and cycles of the loads are shortening. Uh, luckily, drivers are still waiting less, but they finally made progress compared to how long they were waiting last year, which is like two hours, not very fun. And then finally, how are fuel prices going to impact this situation? Because it appears there's two competing theories and it looks like right now, volume appears to be the first casualty and not rate. Yeah, Thomas, I love this breakdown. I think it's a great point to bring up the case of what's going to happen. Our shipper is going to really start to question that extra or marginal increase in another load or our carrier is going to really start to opt up and have to go with those higher rates. So it's really going to be a, an interesting thing to watch for sure. Thanks so much for this carrier update. We'll check in with you again throughout the morning. But right now, we're going to toss it back over to Kaylee Nix.